Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is going to be an overview of the Death Adder V3 Pro Faker Edition. Personally, I think this is the best iteration of the Death Adder to date. There's a few little things that are improved over the original, but there's not much there. So warranting the $20 increase markup on the mouse from $149 to $169 is going to be a personal preference. I think if you're on the market for this mouse, you're somebody that likes red, you like the design, or you're maybe a huge Faker fan. And I think it's great to see Razer collabing with professional players. I hope we see more of this in the future. It'd be great to see some really professional players who are just consistently perfecting their craft, collabing with some of these major companies. And I do think that just the design, the colorway, everything to me kind of stands out as being very well done. I think you're either going to love the design or hate the design. Personally, I love it. I think the black accents with the red top shell, and it does seem the bottom shell actually is a little bit of a different uh, shade of red. So it's a nice little offset between the top shell and the separation from the bottom shell. I think everything looks really good, but I do want to get into the differences of the mouse, and you guys can kind of determine whether or not it's a purchase fit for you or not. Something I like to focus on on this channel is whether a product makes me better, I stay the same, or I play worse. And the Death Adder V3 Pro Wireless Edition is definitely something that I would say is my top ergonomic wireless recommendation. It's something in terms of the ergonomic lineup I definitely play better on than everything else. I think just the combination of the weight, the weight balance, the new gen optical switches, the great sensor performance, everything combines to make an overall package that definitely feels superb compared to everything else on the market. But the differences aren't so extravagant that something like the Pulsar X-Lite V2, I would say, should not be on your eye if you are not able to afford something like a Death Adder V3 Pro. Although the Pulsar X-Lite V2 does not have optical switches, it has an older gen sensor, it's still a very compelling purchase because the shape, the weight, the wireless performance, everything is great on the Pulsar uh, X-Lite V2. It is more along the lines of the size of an EC2 compared to an EC1 where the Death Adder V3 Pro definitely picks up the length uh, kind of like the EC1. I think the Death Adder V3 Pro for me for my performance in Apex is something I am able to play my best on. And for me on the days where I'm just not really feeling consistent, I'm not feeling comfortable, I'm not feeling like myself, it is something like the G Pro Super Light I'm able to pick up and I'm just able to feel at home. I'm able to feel comfortable. I can just rest my hand on it without having an aggressive grip and play well and play comfortable. And it allows me to begin to close in and hone in on my consistency on those days where I haven't played, let's say, for three or four days and then I hop back on. Um, it's definitely something that's able to help me transition then into my smaller mice in my lineup if I want to even swap to smaller mice. So it is just something that to me has always felt really good, particularly since its release. Now, what is new on this edition? And I do want to note that in comparing it to the wired 8K Death Adder, I can say the grip here is, I think, improved on the Faker Edition over the black and the white. It's, to me, something that feels pretty rubberized and grippy. It doesn't pick up any oil prints to any you know particular extent. And it's something that feels very dry in the hand. It never gets slippery, moist, or wet, in my opinion. But the coating is not quite as good as the black version of the wired Death Adder 8K. This thing just feels, I mean, you put your hand on this and it's just like your hand is stuck to this thing. And it's just very, very grippy. But for the wireless format, I do think that I enjoy the grip and the coating on this more than the black and the white. It doesn't have that kind of like rough texture that the white copy had. It's very smooth, very grippy, and again, feels a little bit rubberized. So they did a really good job with the coating. In terms of the side buttons and just the side of the mouse, on my first copy of the Death Adder V3 Pro in white, over time, my shell actually began to start flexing in um, with even just moderate use. I could kind of, when I kind of tensed up in game, I could feel it move a little bit. I think the build quality on the Faker Edition is absolutely perfect. The shell is not going to budge at all, and it feels great. 
I do have a little bit of post travel on mouse four and mouse five, nothing that is significant that I feel in game. And from the top down perspective, when I'm using this uh, in first person shooters, I have no noticeable pre or post travel on mouse one and mouse two. Everything feels consistent. The weight balance is fantastic. Overall, again, making a really nice package in game. I do have ever so slight post travel on mouse one after the actuation of the switch but nothing significant, again, nothing that I would feel in game. I do think that it is a superior ergonomic mouse on the market right now. Pulsar is coming out with their new x Lite copies uh, with 4K enhancements as well. But I do think that right now for price to performance at $150, if you're getting the original, um, I do think you're getting a really nice package. Again, if you don't want to spend that, there is the Pulsar x Lite V2. Taking it up an extra $20, it really comes down to one, if you're a Faker fan again, uh, two, if you like the color and the design. Um, but I do have to say that I think the build quality is an improvement over the first batches of Death Adder V3s. And I do think that the coating to me feels a little bit better than the original. So take that for what it is. Again, I do think that what I would have loved to have seen is side buttons that feel like the wired copy. The wired copy, for whatever reason, the side buttons actually feel a lot snappier to me, a lot more tactile. There's ever so slight, just a bit more mushiness on the wireless copy. Again, they feel great, um, but whatever they did to the side buttons on the wired 8K and the coating is just really, really nice. I'd love to see that moving into the future. But again, a great wireless Death Adder V3 integration here in the Faker collab. So guys, I am certainly not going to belabor the point. The major differences, of course, are again, the red colorway, the collab with the design with Faker. I do think that in terms of build quality, it's better than my original batches in both black and white. I think the coating is really nice on the Faker edition. And it is, again, perfectly weight balanced. And my copy in the Faker edition comes to 62 grams. In terms of wireless performance in the bracket of the market for ergonomic mice, I think it is an awesome mouse and one that uh, I wanted to purchase because I personally like the design. If you guys don't like the design, uh, certainly this is one that you can skip over and you can always go for the white or the black. That is it for this one, guys. I hope it helped. If it did, please leave a sub to the channel. I'll see you guys in the next review. Peace.